I just feel like I need to kind of... <laughs> that was Ollie. <laughs> He's sitting right here with me. guys it's august i can't believe it's already august and that means i am about a month a little more than a month like a month and four days away from baby's due date so we are at la casita la casita de arroyo and we're taking our maternity shoot Aww. oh you smile good job that's so sweet and family shoot with caroline tran she's been taking a lot of our what family happened? photos the tarantula zoom in on it it's like a black widow oh my gosh it was Where coming for us. I am so excited to see how these turn out. She's doing it with film, so I have no idea what to expect because you don't have like those viewfinders, the preview. So this is like going back old school where you have to wait. Listen inside. <gasps> What's the CC Heresy? One, two, three. <laughs> to be honest, I feel like I am slowing down so much just last week seriously i thought i was going into labor and the funny thing is with the last baby ersi um i never felt like braxton hicks contractions but this one it was like stopped me in my tracks painful and i had to call the advice nurse and ask like what i could do because i was only 34 weeks um along and i did not want to go in labor yet we need to cook this baby a little bit longer korean pot stickers Watch out. she loves asian food Watch out. Watch out. please Watch out. say please <sighs> yeah Oh, it's a big bite. What she recommended to me and what might be helpful to you guys if you guys ever have like Braxton Hicks contractions um, is to jump in a warm bath immediately and drink like a ton of water to help relax the muscles and it could possibly be due to dehydration, all those contractions. Um, it was almost like 100 degrees here so maybe that's why but I just feel like I need to take care of myself better so that's why we have been just kind of laying low. To be honest, I've just been hanging out with Aracy a lot because mom guilt has really taken over going? already. And I don't know what it's gonna be like adjusting to two kids. So many people mom. that I have talked to say that the transition from zero to one kid was so much harder for them than it was from one to two kids just because they already did this before, they know the routine, but I see a lot of people on Instagram especially um, like one of my favorite Instagram account is called shut the kale up and she just had her second baby and to be honest this girl is so chill she just seems to be able to handle everything and she's super real but she said that having two kids is no joke so I just really really worry about what it's gonna be like I don't know it's been kind of weighing on me a lot so we've just been hanging out a lot with her and then i also like cry at a drop of a hat so oh, i'm a mess you guys i am a serious mess <laughs> anyways but we've just been playing with her a lot just seeing her explore her interests she has been loving um this water toy we got for her outside it's like a um, water table and then this turtle that was supposed to be a sandbox ended up being Whoa. almost like her swimming pool which is totally fine because it's been so nice. hot here in LA that anything to cool us down would be good um but also we've just been getting out a lot more going to explore pasadena is such a cute area good morning it's saturday 
We got out bright and early and we are at the farmer's market in Pasadena. The reason why I trekked all the way here is to get a very specific fruit. It's a mango nectarine. Like, have you ever heard that before? And then they also have these grapes that are like lychee and it's only from one person. His name is Ken's Top Notch Produce. But that is why we're here and uh, yeah. Pasadena is really cute and we went to explore, play at the park, the farmer's market. And like I said, you guys, in the video, I went there specifically for this guy, a mango a nectarine, which I totally want to show you because it is so unique. I found this when I went back home um, in Santa Clara. That was the first time I found um, the mango nectarine by one producer it's a farmer named ken's top notch produce and so many of you guys asked me on instagram where you could find his farm but just go ahead and dm him on instagram it's ken's top notch produce but they're all over california whenever you're picking out nectarines make sure you find nectarines that have a lot of these like blemishes the more perfect they look actually the more bland they'll taste so if it all looks like this don't buy it but if it has these like kind of burnt spots that means that it's gonna be super sweet and let's try it I love my nectarines kind of crunchy still like apples if they get soft that means like I like it nice and crunchy okay so here is what the nectarine looks like pretty standard I'm sorry about my nails I need to paint them Mm, it's just so good. It's super duper sweet, very flavorful. I don't know if I would say it tastes like a mango at all, but it's just so deliciously sweet, like candy. I bought so many of these because I know they only last for like a month. They're only in season for a month, so I bought like 10. And so I've, I've just been enjoying like one a day. When I was there, I found these amazing lychee grapes like lychee grapes. I know a lot of you guys think that these hybrid fruits are full of GMOs, except they're not. They kind of graft them. Um, basically, they cross-pollinate the varieties. I mean, they have to be similar. So like I said in one of my last videos, mango is a stone fruit, nectarine is a stone fruit, so that they can cross-pollinate them. Same with the lychee. A lychee is kind of like similar to a grape. I don't know if there's like lychee in here, if it's like cross-pollinated or what, but the interesting thing is it just tastes like a lychee. Mm-hmm. Yes, totally tastes like a lychee. And honestly, I would prefer eating this over a lychee because there is no seed. But have you guys tried the cotton candy grapes at all? Those were the rage last month and I was such a fan until I discovered these. But those are like tooth achingly sweet. I love them, but I can only eat a few at a time. Also, if you guys notice, I am completely out of breath. Just everything kind of just takes my entire breath away because the baby is growing. I don't know if it's flipped yet. I've been going to the acupuncturist and I feel like it has flipped because I feel kicks up here in my ribs, like digging in my ribs and sometimes it's like bam, it hurts so bad. But I also feel it really, really low so I'm hoping and praying that it has flipped. I am 35 weeks as of today and my doctor's appointment is tomorrow. And the nice thing is, or the annoying thing is, is that I have to go back to the doctor every week until I deliver. So it'll be good to see the progress if it hadn't uh, flipped yet. I just can't believe how close we are getting to baby's due date. In a way, I'm really, really, really not ready for it. I mean, I think I will just take it as it comes, but 
I don't know. It's just gonna be so hard. Luckily, my mom's coming down. I had to beg her to come down this coming week just because I couldn't really handle it anymore. I've just been so exhausted. Most of my days are spent in bed because it's so hard to move around and do anything. And I know I really should just take it easy, but my mind is just going a mile a minute. The big project that I was working on, the one that I showed you guys in the last vlog, I finally met my deadline so I turned everything in on time and it felt like such a weight was lifted off my shoulders but then at the same time I feel like there's still so much to do like filming wise I know I have been kind of not neglecting the channel on YouTube but I just haven't been filming as much as we were before because I was working on too many things there was too many things on my plate but I definitely want to put the focus back on YouTube because that's really where my passion lies I love making videos and the only sucky thing is is like YouTube is not the same as it was maybe even two years ago during my last pregnancy. I just felt like I was really able to, you know, do what I want to do on YouTube and still connect with you guys. But now YouTube is just like, I compare it to like an extreme sport where everybody has to go bigger and bolder and just be more crazy, like mixing a hundred different cereals together to try things, like stupid things like that that really does not represent who I am. And I don't want to fall into that trap where I do those types of things just to get views because honestly, if you look at them, everything that's been getting pushed out by YouTube has been those like outrageous videos where you mix stuff together or you have to have like this crazy challenge. And for food channels and videos, like a simple recipe, I feel like is just not enough anymore. And I definitely want to evolve with the times, but I also need to stay true to myself. So that's where I'm kind of fighting that balance between coming up with content that is meaningful to me and meaningful to you guys, yet still, playing the YouTube game, you know? Do you guys watch those types of videos? I'd actually love to get your feedback. This isn't something we've ever talked before about before in our normal videos about just, you know, what the future holds for YouTube and the kind of content that you guys want to see and my channel. I am developing a new series. I'm pre-filming it right now. We have one or two already filmed and I'm gonna try to do like a six part series. And this one, I feel like I am really proud of. I cannot wait for you guys to see it. Based on the past videos that I've made that are kind of similar to this, I think you guys will enjoy it. But like I said, I just don't know if you will see it because the algorithm of YouTube is just crazy. I have what, 700 something thousand subscribers and literally only 20,000 of you guys see it, which is really disheartening. Um, and I don't know if it's just because like recipes aren't interesting or what. It is what it is. And I'm just going to keep pushing through because what can you do? I don't know. I'd love to hear your thoughts though. Like, what do you guys think? And I, actually, I really do love doing these types of vlogs too because it allows me a chance to talk to you and just be real and just be raw and I don't know, it's like a two-way conversation, you know? But I do find myself watching a lot of like vlogs, normal stuff, nothing that's too crazy. I love watching people going out to eat because it makes me feel like I wanna go out to eat, especially Korean food. We're getting our Korean food fix right now. We went out to the farmer's market again. I had to pick up more of these lychee grapes and the mango nectarines, and then we ended up finding this amazing restaurant called Yukdaejang. Um, they're known for like their, it's a Korean dish called Yukdaejang and it's like ramen noodles with shredded beef and a spicy sauce. I would compare it to a Vietnamese bung bao wei if you've ever had that before. It's the Korean version of it. I didn't get that because it was just so hot. It was like 90 degrees outside. So Nate said usually when it's really hot like that, 
Koreans love to eat this cold icy noodles called naengmyeon. And for me, they had one version called bibim naengmyeon with the red spicy sauce. And ah, anything with that red spicy sauce is just, it calls my name. So I had to order that and it was delicious. The noodles are so chewy. They're like buckwheat noodles. Ugh, if you guys have never tried it before, you have to. It's in this icy cold broth. I am salivating just talking about it right now. That's gonna be my spot. Every time we go back to like St. Gabriel Valley, I need to go there and get some noodles either there or to go. <laughs> Anyways, we've been trying to make the most out of our last few weeks of freedom before we have to just like stay home and take care of baby for like two to three months. I don't know, I haven't really figured out our routine. I remember the first month after having Erisi, we really, really just kept it low key and stayed home for a month and then slowly, slowly integrated our lives back to normalcy and established a routine which is gonna be really good. My mom's gonna be coming down for a month or so to help us out, which I am so, so thankful for. Oh, I just don't know how we were gonna do it by ourselves this time. The last time when I had Erisi, we had Nate's family, his dad, his aunt. My sister would be coming over almost every day to help make us food and stuff like that. So the sucky thing about having the baby down here is like I don't really have any family like see I cry at a drop of a hat <laughs> it's ridiculous but I don't have any family here and it's just kind of us alone and so I am kind of nervous and scared about that just being able to adjust I really hope postpartum is not gonna kick me in the butt but I'm gonna try my best to just kind of keep in contact with a lot of friends talk to my sister every day so I don't feel so isolated and alone but yeah I don't know <laughs> um we ended up going to Thousand Oaks which is a little bit north of LA to meet our friend Jimmy and Alyssa and I had some really great Italian food at this random place in a strip mall called Made in Italy Bistro. They had really delicious like handmade noodles. I had a cacio e pepe. Nate had this like uh, bolognese and then I was craving tiramisu so badly so that really hit the spot. And afterwards we went to this cute little, I don't even know what it's called, like a wine bar. Um, where we just hung out outside, the kids, uh, Erisi and Alyssa's baby played with the water fountain. It was like the cutest thing. It was like the perfect thing to do on a hot summer day. Uh, I can't wait until I can enjoy a glass of rosé. <laughs> I, think, I think the past eight or nine months has really been... Uh, I don't really drink that much, but on a cold or on a hot summer day just like an ice cold glass of rosé just sounds so good to me but in the meantime i've just been drinking a lot of sparkling water i have some like cocktail mocktail concoctions that i've come up with so maybe i'll share that with you guys in a recipe video soon i can't believe we are a month away maybe even less if baby decides to come early my doctor's appointment is tomorrow to find out whether baby has flipped or not so i will be sure to let you know and update you on that oh yeah one more thing i forgot to say was that nate and our friend johnny put up bistro lights in the backyard Whoa! And they just look so incredibly romantic and beautiful. This is something that I've been wanting to get done all summer long, but I've just been too busy and tired. It's finally up and we've just been enjoying our time outside for like the two days that we've had it up. We had a nice little dinner outside and I think we're just gonna just hang out out there for a while just cause it's such a nice and relaxing place to be. Ah, I love summer. Thank you so much for watching guys. I know I rambled a lot in this video. There's just so much yet so little to say at the same time. Uh, that doesn't even make sense. There's just so much to say and share. Sure. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Susan? Yeah, she told me.
call me. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm so worried. Oh. No, I'm glad that baby sucks. I mean, most of the time, baby does. Oh, I'm so early. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I will see you next time. Bye.